Welcome to the Idaho Fishing Games State of Deer and Elk series. I'm Dr. Nicole Walrath, the Idaho Fishing Game State Wildlife Veterinarian. In today's installment, I'm going to discuss further what CWD is, how it affects wildlife and hunters, and how we can manage the spread and effect of the disease. Chronic wasting disease, or CWD, is a prion disease of deer, elk, moose, and caribou. There have been no known human cases. Prion diseases are infectious, untreatable, and fatal. All Idaho cervids, or members of the deer family, are susceptible. Prions are a misfolded protein, and the abnormal shape of the protein makes them extremely resilient. As a prion is not a virus or bacteria, medicines such as antibiotics, antivirals, or vaccines are not options to treat or prevent prion infections. Animals cannot build an immunity to prions. Given their structure, prions are extremely difficult to destroy and remain in the environment for many years. The protein responsible for CWD is infectious, meaning the normal proteins in the presence of CWD prions transform into an infectious misfolded protein. Therefore, once a deer, elk, or moose is infected, more and more CWD prions accumulate within their bodies. Prions will concentrate in greater amounts in the central nervous and lymphatic systems in deer, elk, and moose. Therefore, we use brainstem and lymph node tissues found near the base of the skull for CWD surveillance testing. Because CWD prions are found throughout a deer, elk, or moose's body, prions can be spread from animal to animal several ways. For example, grooming, marking, mating, and pregnancy. CWD prions are also spread into the environment by saliva, urine, scat, and carcasses. This creates a cycle of CWD prion spreading, for example, by deer infecting deer, deer contaminating the environment, and the CWD prions in the environment infecting deer. Once CWD is established in an area, more and more animals become infected and more habitat will be contaminated with CWD prions. However, because animals are infected at different times and death can occur, on average between 18 to 24 months after infection, large-scale die-offs or massive population decline are not expected immediately after a CWD detection. It may take years to see population level effects, and once the effects are detectable, the CWD prevalence in the population and the environment is great enough that reversing the population decline becomes extremely difficult, if not impossible. When the term population level effect is used, we are typically speaking of a change in population growth rate. This rate is determined by the number of births and deaths that occur over a certain amount of time, usually one year. A population is stable when there are equal number of births and deaths. When there are more births than deaths, the population is growing. And when there are more deaths than births, the population is declining. There are several studies from other states showing that as the proportion of infected animals increases, the population will no longer be growing or stable. It is in a decline. Idaho Fishing Games goal is to keep CWD prevalence low enough to keep population stable and to minimize the spread of CWD to uninfected populations. Idaho Fish and Game has a CWD response plan in place that outlines the current understanding of management options that may be implemented in Idaho. From the experiences of other states that have had CWD for years, we know that higher deer densities and older age class animals, especially bucks, increases the prevalence of CWD in a population and contributes to the spread of the disease to additional areas. After detection of CWD in a localized area, the best known management response to reduce the chance of spread and keep prevalence low is to manage for a reduced deer density and a younger age structure of deer in that area. This management strategy results in fewer mature bucks and fewer deer overall in the infected population, which is obviously less desirable to hunters in that area. However, if left unmanaged, the population level effect of the disease would likely result in the same decreased density and younger age structure, but
but with the additional negative effect of increasing the chance of spread to additional areas. As we manage CWD in Idaho into the future, different management responses may be more appropriate for the various situations that develop. CWD was detected in Idaho November of 2021 in Game Management Unit 14. As of July 2023, there have been 49 detections of CWD in and around the Slate Creek drainage, indicated by the yellow circles. These detections include one elk, eight mule deer, and 40 white-tailed deer. In response to the detections, Idaho Fish and Game has established a CWD management zone comprised of game management units, 14 and 15, based on previous data from big game movements. There are special rules in place for CWD management zones that include hunter handling of carcasses, CWD testing, and transport of animal parts out of the zone. These rules were developed to help reduce the spread of CWD into new areas and to provide needed data to determine prevalence and distribution of CWD. Idaho Fish and Game is not just interested in sampling from CWD management areas. Since 1996, Idaho Fish and Game has tested over 26,000 samples statewide. We continue to prioritize CWD surveillance across the state with particular interest in game management units near Idaho's border with Montana and Wyoming. Hunters can help by providing samples from their harvested deer, elk, and moose. Idaho Fish and Game will provide a CWD sampling kit upon request, as well as provide many locations where CWD samples can be dropped off or sampled by Idaho Fish and Game staff. To stay informed on what Idaho Fish and Game is doing to manage CWD and how hunters can help, please visit the Idaho Fish and Game website where you will find information on CWD management areas, rules, hunter sampling instructions, and locations for sample drop-off. Thank you for joining me to learn more about CWD and check our website for the next installment of the State of Deer and Elk series.